So this is the first part of my little vloggity vlog vlog the next few days. This weekend it is FantasyCon, which I am so excited about because it is the first convention that I've ever been to and me and my boyfriend are going together and we're hoping that we're going to be able to go to like a ton of panels, see loads of authors, buy nude books and just generally have a great time. Before that, because that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, today is Thursday, today there is actually a little event on at my local Waterstones with Brandon Sanderson, Lee Bardugo and Bradley Ballou and I'm so excited about that because I obviously love Sanderson as many of you guys will know and I've never met him before so that'll be amazing. And then equally, Bradley, I really, really loved his book. I just read 12 Kings, which is his book, and it was amazing. I really, really loved it. So I think I gave it like a 4, 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was really good, and I'm so excited to meet him. This morning, I am going into town to go to my Waterstone so that I can pick up the books. So yeah, it's going to be a fun few days, and I'm going to try and vlog every now and then. I'm hopeful that I'll get some good footage, and I will just edit it all together into a lovely squished load of stuff for you guys. So yeah, join me on the fantasy con journey. This thing is my audiobook and it's all very autumnal outside which is lovely. Hi guys, so it is now Friday which is the day after the Sanderson event that we went to. It was really good fun. I got to talk to Sanderson Lee Bardugo and Bradley Blue, which was amazing. Basically each of them did a reading, so I'll insert some clips that I took of them doing their readings from either the book that they've just released or, in Sanderson's case, a book that he has coming out next year, which is Stormlight 3. So I didn't do much because it's not spoilery, but um, I didn't really want to film all of it. So I'll just insert a little bit of each of them. She used her momentum to launch herself like a sling stone. She flew toward a bare loop of stone out of his cell before sunrise. Except he wasn't in a cell, he was chained to a chair, so what the hell was going on? The man was in his forties, with a gaunt but handsome face and a hairline making a determined retreat from his forehead. Throwing his shoulder against his foe and shoving him backward. Something thrummed inside of Dalinar, the pulse of the battle, the rhythm of killing and dying, the thrill. Going on to the books that I got signed, I picked up three books because I wanted one of them signed by each of the authors. I already own this one. It's Legion and the Empress Soul, but I wanted to get this one again because I don't have it signed and I really wanted this one to be my signed copy because I really love the Empress Soul. So this is the um, signature that Sanderson did and it says, I know your soul, which is quite creepy actually, but no, it's very nice. I'm glad that I have this one and he did for Caitlin, so that's really nice. Six of Crows, which is by Lee Bardugo. This is set in the same world as her Grisha trilogy, but you don't have to read this one um, after the Grisha trilogy, you can just dive in here. So I've already read the first one in the Grisha trilogy, but I think this one might be my next Lee Bardugo book. Oh, it's got a really nice map. I just discovered this. And another map. Maps everywhere. She signed it and she said be dangerous, which I think is very bad advice probably, but uh, the most exciting one in my opinion, even though I love Sanderson and I've read all of his stuff, I think the signature of Bradley is just fantastic. Oh, and I also got this little bookmark as well, which is also signed. But his signature is just awesome, like it's calligraphic, it's really cool. And he wrote, Caitlin, so great meeting you in Nottingham from Brad in 2015. So that was awesome. So those are the three that I got in order to get them signed and I'm very happy with them all and it was great being able to chat to the authors but then I did also pick up a few other things on the same day or I've had them sent to me recently so I thought I would just very quickly show you them before we go off and do FantasyCon which starts today. The first book that I picked up is the paperback version of The Broken Eye by Brent Weeks. I've been waiting for this to come out. It is the third one in the Lightbringer series and I wanted it in paperback because I have all the others in paperback so I was waiting for this to come out and I realised the other day that it finally had and now I have it. The next one I was actually sent by Penguin, I requested it and this is In Order to Live by Yemeni Park, I think her name is. Um, she is an escapee from North Korea and it's her story of what she did to escape and the things that went on in order for her to need to escape because North Korea is kind of in a bit of a crisis at the moment so very interesting, I'm sure. Phonogram 3, or 
issue 3, which is part of the Immaterial Girl one. And this one is by Gillan, McKelvey, Wilson and Cows again, and I'm very excited for this. And then the last one is probably one of the most exciting books ever because it is Lumberjanes Volume 2, and you guys all know how much I loved the first one. It is just so fun, so cute and so quirky, so I'm really, really excited to dive into this and I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Now we're going to go off to FantasyCon, so I will continue this video there. So we are on our way in, it's a bit cold, a bit nippy, so I got my gloves on. Um, and we just walked in to the <laughs> this grounds of the other uni in Nottingham. And it's so much nicer. <laughs> it's like it's so lovely. So it's very pretty, and uh, I'm jealous. And there's a big lake, so we're going to walk around the big lake, and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to find where it actually is. I will let you guys know how it goes. <laughs> Wish us luck. <laughs> little island just in the lake which is super cute. We're gonna cross over this bridge up here I think. It is a bit nice. It's so big. Spacious. Very jealous. <laughs> but guys we found some geese. Just chilling. One of them is giving me a dirty look. He's camouflaged. Hello. We've like come to the land of the ducks. You're all just asleep. <laughs> Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> Crazy, there's more of them over on that hill. <laughs> this is a nice little island we're on. This route is so much nicer than I had envisioned. We've arrived. Yay! Been here five minutes. Poster of a dragon. This one's nice as well. I like the vibe. Welcome to Fantasy Con. chair of the convention and uh, this is uh, pretty much the last time you'll get to see me this weekend unless things break. So we're going to pass you straight over to our mistress of ceremonies, uh, Julia D. McKenna. Collection, an anthology that you can submit to, and the people whose short stories get picked up from the anthology um, then have a better leg in for writing for the the novel tie-in specifically. Um, 
not, it's not going to work for every property because not every property is doing the short story collections. But if there is one and there's an anthology, then that's a, that's a way you might be able to jump in. Hi guys! So it is still the Friday. We just got home. It's like half ten at night and we just got back because there was a karaoke this evening. But we decided we would give that one a miss because we were quite worn out from our first day. We had a great time. It was so much fun. I would happily pay the money I paid just for the one day. So I'm so excited that we've got another two. And tomorrow I think is going to be the main day. There were a lot of free books and a lot of books that I bought. Well, I only bought three but there were a lot of free ones that I wanted. First one we got given is this one. It is the fantasy con book and it has uh, Juliet McKenna, Joe Fletcher and Sanderson and John Connolly on the front because they are the main four and it was really great to sort of have a read through. Yeah, there was just some really interesting things in here sort of uh, talking about all sorts of different things. So that was that one. I will definitely have to give it more of a read through maybe tonight or tomorrow. I'm going to show you some of the ones that I got for free. I got a lot. <laughs> First one is this one, which is Empire of Black and Gold, or In Black and Gold, and it's the book one in the Shadows of the App series by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I've been meaning to get into this series for a while, I have the Kindle version already, but I thought it was well worth picking up this one because I do actually like these covers, even though they're a bit random. And I've heard good things about the series, and I know it's a really long, epic series. The next one I got for free is Fairy Tales, Stories of the Grim and Gruesome, which is edited by Stephen Jones and illustrated by Alan Lee, which is the main reason I picked it up. Alan Lee was one of the concept artists for Lord of the Rings and Hobbit, which as you guys know I'm doing my dissertation on, and I really really love his stuff so I'm sure that this is going to be awesome because anything illustrated by him is great, and fairy tales with different authors sounds good. So uh, some of the authors are Ramsey Campbell, Peter Crowther, Christopher Fowler, Neil Gaiman, and lots and lots of others as well. So the next one that I picked up is Unwrapped Sky and this one is by Rogeric Davidson. I probably said that wrong. Don't know an awful lot about this one but it said a little quote from Garth Nix who I really really like and it says a lyrical and evocative novel and it's got someone like floating over the city on a boat which just sounds very cool. Kaylee Amar, an ancient city ruled by warring houses once the gods used magic or thermaturgy to shape the future. Now that magic seems like a distant memory, so excited for that. The next one that I picked up is one that I think I've heard Michael talking about on his channel. Um, this is Swords of Good Men by Snorri Chris Hansen. I'm not exactly sure how you say it. To weary Viking Ulfa Thormodson, the town of Stenvik is the penultimate stop on the return leg of a long and perilous journey. So I think it's going to be kind of Viking-esque which is cool because I haven't really read anything Viking recently or even indeed in the past so very excited to give this one a try. The next one I picked up is Traitor's Blade which is by Sebastian de Castell. I again believe that I have this on my Kindle but I wanted a physical copy when it was free I couldn't really resist and it's the first one in The Great Cloaks. Um, it says the king is dead, the Great Cloaks have been disbanded and Falicho de Monde and fellow magistrates Kest and Brasti have been reduced to working as bodyguards for a nobleman who refuses to pay them. Things could be worse, their employer could be lying dead on the floor whilst the three of them are forced to watch as the killer plants evidence, framing them for the murder. Oh wait, that's exactly what's happening. The next one that I have is Windhaven, which is by George R. R. Martin and Lisa Tuttle. Tuttle? I'm not sure how you say that. Among the scattered islands that make up the water world of Windhaven, no one holds more prestige than the silver-winged flyers, romantic figures who cross treacherous oceans braving shifting winds and sudden storms to bring news, gossip, songs and stories to the waiting populace. The next one that I have is Moon's Artface, which is by Tom Lloyd. And this one I picked up mainly because of the cover. I have no idea what it is, but it's published by Glanx, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. In a quiet corner of the Imperial City, investigator Narin discovers the result of his first potentially lethal mistake. Minutes later, he makes a second. After an unremarkable career, Narin finally has the chance of promotion to the hallowed ranks of the Lawbringers, guardians of the Emperor's laws and bastions for justice in a world of brutal expediency. Joining the honoured body is a culmination of a lifelong dream, but it couldn't possibly have come at a worse time. The next one that I have is uh, The Gospel of Loki, which is by Joanne Harris. This one I have seen around. Love the cover design, I think it's beautiful. And it says on the back, with his notorious reputation for trickery and deception and an ability to cause as many problems as he solves, Loki is a Norse god like no other. Demon born, he is viewed with deepest suspicion by his fellow gods who will never accept him as one of their own. And for this he vows to take revenge. 
So it sounds like it's going to be really fun, it's not too long and I'm looking forward to it. The next book that I have is uh, The Night by Pierre Pevel and this is A Tale from High Kingdom. Um, not heard of this author either but it looks like it would be a fairly epic one so I'm, I'm, I picked it up. It says, Traitor or Hero? This is the tale of Lorn Ascarian. Tale Chaser's Song by Tad Williams. I haven't read anything by Tad Williams, so I'm very happy to get my hands on this one. Um, I've also heard very good things about this, I think. I believe it's published by, yeah, Hot Escape. This one says, Weaving through the tall grasses of this world is Tale Chaser, a young ginger tomcat with a good heart and a restless spirit. When his friend Hushpad vanishes, Tale Chaser sets out to find her. Kind of in honour of Mercedes I picked these up because they are short story collections and she is always, always telling me to uh, read more short stories. So I picked these up because of you, Mercedes, and I think you'll like them if you haven't heard of them. Um, this one is called Tales from the Fragrant Harbour and it's by Gary Kilworth. And this one is about Japan. Um, it says, these short stories were all penned in and around Gary Kilworth's time in Hong Kong. The collection is split half and half into general fiction stories and supernatural tales. They were all inspired by people and places of that magical, effervescent city, not forgetting its surrounding mountains and countryside and the myriad islands that come within its sphere. There are tales from the Chinese viewpoint and stories about the lives of expatriates. I'm sure it's going to be very fascinating. And I also really like the cover. It's a bit random, but I like it. Called Diversifications, and this one is by uh, James Lovegrove. And I love the cover of this one. But again, when I opened it, I found out it was a short story collection. It says, it's James Lovegrove's second collection of short fiction, a swirling kaleidoscope of ideas, language, and wordplay. In this book, you will meet robots living in a flesh world, travelers who, vi who vie to explore the most exotic alternative dimensions, and a virus that, spread, that is spread by speech. The next ones that I got, I actually bought all three of them. I got a three for six pound deal, so each of these was two pound, which in considering they're all hardbacks and some of them are really new, pretty happy with that deal. This one I had never heard of before, it's called The Final Testimony of Raphael Ignatius Phoenix by Paul Sussman. Um, I'd never heard of it, but I loved the cover and it was just beautifully designed, as you can see. Lots of sort of cut out pattern design and it just really works. Um, I picked this one up because I read the blurb inside. It says, My name is Raphael Ignitus Phoenix and I am a hundred years old, or I will be in ten days' time in the early hours of the 1st of January 2000, when I kill myself. Raphael Ignitus Phoenix has had enough. Born at the beginning of the 20th century, he is determined to take his own life as the old millennium ends and the new one begins. He has the pill to help him end it all, but before he does, he wants to get his affairs in order and put the record straight and that includes making sense of his own long life, a life that spanned the century. And so he decides to write it all down and, issuing the more usual method of pen and paper, begins to record his story on the walls of the isolated castle that will be his final home. So it sounds like it's going to be a really kind of weird, wacky, but very interesting story. The next one I managed to get my hands on is The Vagrant by Peter Newman. This one I'm very happy to have because I heard a lot of good things and a lot of talking about this recently. I think it came out maybe earlier this year or last year. For more than a thousand years, a crack in the ground known as the breach has been watched. It was prophesied that the breach would one day open, spilling terror. But as the centuries passed and that day did not come, mankind lowered its guard. And so the first invaders to float up from the depths that end a sleepy thousand year watch with screams and blood. And finally, an army arrives at the breach the enemy are waiting. And the final one that I picked up is this one which is The Liar's Key and this is by Mark Lawrence. I, as you guys know, really love Mark Lawrence's stuff and I haven't read this series yet so I wanted to pick it up and this is a beautiful little hardback edition that I just thought was stunning. So I picked this one up for two pounds, can't go wrong. So it's been a pretty long, pretty tiring day so I'm going to head off for now but I will definitely be vlogging some more and putting in more footage and stuff tomorrow so I will see you then. So it is the second day of the con, it is Saturday now and we are back at the Union campus again. We had to walk through here last night and it was pitch black and it was quite scary but I thought if anyone attacked me I would have a lot of books to whack them over the head with so it's all good in the end. Um, so we're heading back Day two is going to be the busiest day, I think. Um, we've got a lot of food, we've fueled up. Shane just found fibre, which I'm a bit jealous of. 
Um, but it bodes well. It means we're obviously going to have a good day, I think. So I'm quite excited about all the panels today. Got some really good ones. And yeah, it's just going to be fun. So again, I will try and vlog bits of it and uh, show you guys as we go. figuring out um, the sewage. Now, there's there's this other thing where it's like, I do kind of do some um, some world building the way to say, okay, how did these people arrive at this situation where they act a little bit more like modern people? Um, for the sewage question in, uh, in, in one of my main series, one of the Stormlight Archive, I, I have a vis visual manifestation if there is um, corruption to water or to a wound or things like this. So they don't have to know about microorganisms to say, oh, we shouldn't eat that. We shouldn't drink that water. That wound is infected. And I think just the idea of disease and, um, like, I have a plague in, in, I have a plague. I have a plague in, in my new book, and it obviously it affects the poor differently than it affects the rich. And people who can live, leave the city as opposed to people who have to stay in the city, people who are living in close quarters and don't have access to clean water. So that you know, that then sets a variety of other things in motion because of that. Um, but I do think we do this thing in fantasy um, where we kind of fetishize poverty sometimes. And if she made this kill, then we could make it into a pie. And I was like, if you have stuff to make a pie, like, you're not that damn hungry. Go eat the stuff you were going to make the pie with, you know? So it, it goes to just kind of silly labels where the, the money or credits but it has a has a serious a serious aspect as well. Yeah. I find that stuff really fascinating. You're seeing more and more of that, particularly in the YA science fiction field of the likes equal power. Yeah. Um, which is really interesting. So there's a fire alarm. <laughs> And everyone is outside in the rain. Typical. I am Brad Bullier, uh, and fantasy writer of Kings from the Lions just came out last month. Hello, I'm Adrian Tchaikovsky. I've written the Shadows of the App series, which I'm not going to lie, has a crap ton of work. And I've also written uh, Guild of the Dawn, which is a sort of period of military events. I'm Spiral Tuba, I've written the Romanus House trilogy. Well, the first two books, they're kind of try and be part of Void War, but spoiler, they fail. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Dan Patrick. I am uh, the author of The Boy with Portion and Blade. <laughs> it's published by Galantis, so every time you buy a copy, you make Gillian smile. <laughs> <laughs>
as in characters that are engaged uh, on both sides of a war. Okay, so we seem to have some themes emerging about epic fantasy without asking the question, what is epic fantasy? Um, world building, emotional punch, interplay of plot, character, world building, development of themes, complexity seems to be important, um, a tapestry of elements being woven together by uh, the author, adventure and good writing, and then I think Mark's point that any author who makes you jealous about their good ideas um, has something to recommend them. Uh, I'm so sorry to disturb you, but we have a question from people who have I was wondering if you could tell us day two which is the full day so it was pretty rammed full of amazing panels there was some great great stuff happening today there were some really funny moments we watched a play of the four horsemen of the apocalypse which was really good fun there was just a minute all this um, sort of game that a few of the panelists were playing which was really amusing and then there were some really fantastic debates that happened today as well which I absolutely loved um, we were in panels for most of the day, we didn't really get a very long break, so pretty worn out, but it was very, very cool. A lot of very great discussions, had some great discussions about sort of sentience of robots and things, and AI, and that was all very fascinating as well, and some really great discussions on fight scenes in fantasy. So it was just a lot of very cool stuff, and I definitely had a great time. Um, but I did also pick up a few things. So the first thing that I've got is not actually a book, but I thought I would show you anyway, because it is fantastical. And that is this, which is a print or uh, a print of some artwork by Imogen Mogul, Mongol, I'm not sure how you say her name, but this is obviously a dragon. And when I saw this, I couldn't really resist. I saw a lot of people carrying around these prints of dragons and I just wanted one for myself because I don't actually own any artwork of dragons. So. Now I do and I'm very happy and I'm going to pin it on my notice board behind me and it will have pride of place alongside the Marauders map, which is here. So yes, very excited to get that. And then the next three books I actually got all from the same publisher, which is I think Grimbold they're called. First one I picked up was this one, which is Strange Tales from the Scriptorian Vaults. And this is actually a collection of steampunk short stories, so of course I could not resist Plus these are published really nicely, like they're really good quality paper and they have the matte covers which I always enjoy. Um, and it's edited together by Sammy H.K. Smith and obviously it's just a load of steampunk authors contributing. I believe this was a charity one as well, so all the money was going to a charity that was concerned with reading, which is always a good thing in my book. So I was very happy to pick this one up and again it's not too long. The next one that I got is also by the same author, I didn't realise that until just now, but it is. And this is called In Search of Gods and Heroes, and this is actually a signed copy. Um, didn't realise that until just now either, but you can probably see the signature. This one sounded really interesting, I'll just read you a little bit off the back. Buried in the scriptures of Ibia lies a story of rivalry, betrayal, stolen love and the bitter diversion of the gods into two factions. This rift forced the lesser deities to pledge their divine loyalty either to the shining eternal kingdom or the darkness of the underworld. When a demon sneaks into the mortal world and murders an innocent girl to get her sister Chaley, all pretense of peace between the gods is shattered. For Chaley is no ordinary mortal. She is a demigoddess in hiding for centuries, even from herself. And it goes on to say more, but I will leave it there. 
but it sounded really interesting. I always like to see demons in books because I think it's something that I haven't come across very often done really well and the people who were selling the books obviously were promoting it and saying that this was one of their favourites so I picked it up. Apparently it's got a sarcastic cat in it too which always is a bonus. <laughs> and then the final one that I picked up today, um, I did buy all of these by the way, uh, is Spark and Carousel which is by Joanne Hall. Again it is a signed copy which again I didn't know until I uh, got it back home so that's very very cool and this one I read the back and wanted to pick it up. Spark is a wanted man. On the run after causing the death of his mentor and wild with untamed magic, he arrives in Cape Caray where his latent talents make him the target of rival gangs. It is there that Carousel, a wire walker and thief, takes him under her wing to guide him through the intrigues of the criminal underworld. But when Spark's magic cracks the world and releases demons from the hells beneath, again, demons, uh, two mages of his former order make it their mission to prevent his magic from spilling out of control. So that is everything I picked up today. We've got one more day of panels. I think there's only a few panels tomorrow and then it's the British Fantasy Award ceremony. So that should be a lot of fun. And I will take you guys along with us for the ride. Firstly, I think it makes it all the more important and all the more pleasing to celebrate the British Fantasy Society Awards, and in particular the organisation's ongoing determination, with all the hard work that entails, to welcome newcomers, to encourage everyone to have their say and to feel included. And I'd like to take a moment just to honour the memory of Greg Joyce, who was absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. 